go up and down. Right, a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> I just keep shaking it to get a different answer. Yes, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so there are a lot more headaches. Um, <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Tony Ning and welcome to the Real Estate News Network. I want to share a little bit about myself with you today. Uh, we were very, very poor and I just want to indicate to you that if I could do it, so can you, okay? So uh, when I was 10 years old, my parents got divorced and my mom became a single mom and uh, we were being evicted from where we were living and she got so depressed that's all she wanted was to own a home so she would never be evicted again. So at 10 years old, I was trying to figure out what can I do? How can I help her? I was only 10. So I figured that I'm going to make a plan for myself that by the time I'm 18 years old, I can help buy a home with her. So serendipitously, at 14 years old, I came across this book, Think and Grow Rich. It completely changed my mindset, completely changed how I looked at things, and really completely changed my entire life. This is a fantastic book. So just to make a long story short, by the time I was 18, using some of the, some of the uh, things that I learned from this book, I was able to help my mom buy a home. It was not easy because we found a home that we liked and we didn't qualify for it. I was still going to school. I was 18 years old. I was still going to school going to high school uh, college anyways I couldn't qualify for it I went to the bank with CIBC at the time and I sat down with the manager and the manager said you know you don't have a full-time job I can't qualify you for this mortgage so I, I, I wanted to give up right most people would want to give up but this book taught me to never give up never give up on your dreams so we went back to the owners and said listen we didn't get the mortgage from the bank. Is there anything that we can do to buy this home? So after talking to them a little bit, I said, what if I offer you full price? Yeah. Okay. What if I offer you to take the loan back as a mortgage, a vendor take back as a seller's mortgage? What if you took that back? We could, we could consider that, right? At that time, this is quite a number of years ago. At that time, the, the rates were about if they took the money and invested into it into the into a GIC they probably would have got six or seven percent so I said boldly I don't know where it came from I said I'll offer you eleven percent just give us a loan we'll pay you full price for the home let us let, let us let us let us do the deal they went away the family they went away they talked about it and they came back and they shook my hand and that's how I was able to buy the first home in my entire life at 18 years old with my mother this book is what made it happen for me. So from that point on, I realized how how crazy real estate is because that, that home gone up in price by the time I was like in my 20s, it gone up in price like crazy. So that's when I started learning maybe real estate is a good investment vehicle. So I, I got hundreds of these books at home. This is one of the books. And another one is Buying With Nothing Down, okay? Why? Because I had nothing down, right? So I learned how to buy homes with nothing down I won't go into all the all the details but you can buy a home with nothing down and uh, and that that led me to where I am today so after 35 years of being a real estate broker real estate investor and also a business person entrepreneur okay I wrote my book to help the next generation now this is pretty pretty much thinner than the other books right because because I'm, I'm one of these people that I don't have the patience to read a thick book and I know there's a lot of a lot of a lot of kids nowadays, they don't have, they, you know, they, they don't even like long YouTube videos. They want to see TikTok, you know, like two, two, two minutes of dancing, right? So they have a ADHD or whatever you call it syndrome. So I wrote a thin book so that you can absorb all the content of it in a very short time. In fact, most people say, I, I, I just read it in, in one, one evening, okay, and got, and got what's good, all the good things out of it. And this is from accumulation of all my knowledge over 35 years and I want to say this again to you if I can do it you can do it but you have to change how you think about things and you have to never give up that's my message to you welcome to my channel we're gonna bring you a lot of content useful content and some great guests so stay tuned subscribe hit the notification button 
and do some likes for this video. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time, friends. Bye for now. Hi, welcome to the Real Estate News Network. My name is Tony Ning. I've been in the real estate industry as a broker, investor, you name it, I've done it for the last 35 years. And I want to bring you quality, quality people to come on board to share with you their experiences, their knowledge, and what you and give you some excellent tips as to what to do with your real estate. Today we have a fantastic gentleman. He is a master in solutions. He is a problem solver and he's a fantastic gentleman. And I want to welcome you to our show, the one and only Kevin Breitner. Welcome Thanks to so the show. Thanks, Tony. Pleasure to be here. So, Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I'm a broker of a small team for Remax, and we own a property management company, and uh, it's all about Cressy.ca, and that's complete real estate solutions and investments. For so, them. I'm a first-time investor, right? Yeah. And I want to get into the get into real estate investing. What advice can you offer somebody like me, myself? Um, so, as a, as a first-time investor, our team will help you from beginning to end. Right. Where you need to start first is a plan, right? right? Uh, I say it all the time, and whereas individuals are fingerprints as right. investors. Sure. Uh, some want a small portfolio, some want large, some want one retirement property for the end. Okay. Uh, so really it's starting with the plan about what you're wanting to do from there we're going to take you all the way through to understand what you're wanting right again uh then it comes down to dollar value what you can sure. afford what sure. you can borrow yep. uh what you already have down right and then we can figure out again what, what is next after that once we know how much you can afford then we can start to figure out type of property or area of property right you know um and yeah it's just uh we go from this big down to this when we know right. what we're wanting to get. Uh, and right. then and the investor will start to figure out who they are and what they're right. looking for, right. whether they want something with a renovation involved or they right. just want something turnkey, right. whether they want a duplex or they just want single family, a right. condo. Right. You know, um, there's lots of ways to invest in real estate. There's right. um, a lot of ways to become a landlord as well with different sure. investment strategies to get Absolutely. in. So it, we take it as a holistic approach from you at the beginning to figure sure. out what's going to make the most amount of right. sense for you. Okay. And at the end of the day, it's also always your decision, right? right? It's your money, uh, it's your investment. We're just here to help guide, advise, and consult so that you're making an informed decision to whatever is going to be best for you. Well, you know, the greatest value I see with uh, Cressy, right, is that uh, for investors, the biggest headache is tenant management, right? I mean, you get a bad tenant, and I always say no tenant's better than a bad tenant, right? <laughs> so... So where, how does Cressy come in to accommodate the, the investor to make it a more headache-free investment? Yeah, so tenants, um, they're twofold, right? Either you're placing a tenant, so then you got to do your due diligence when that time comes to make sure that Susan and Frank are a good fit for your property. Right. Or when we acquire a property that's already got tenants in it, there's not really much we can do at that point. But I, I do believe that uh, bad tenants are sometimes, most times, created right. by a situation, right? And sometimes it's because the landlord doesn't know that that's their responsibility or they right. disagree or whatever. Right. But by having that middle person involved to communicate back and forth, if things ever do get rocky, mm -hmm. at least now it's not emotional, right. right? I'm in the middle, you're talking to me, he's talking to sure, sure. you, and we're, we're going at it that way. Um, but yeah, uh, tenants are definitely a headache. That's what sure. it's the horror story that stops everybody from wanting to be a landlord. That's right, the one right, thing there was just right. I don't want to deal with a tenant. Well, right. we'll deal with it. Right. And one third to forty percent of our country right now is a tenant, sure, sure. so they can't all be bad. Right. It's it's about making sure the situation is right sure. and making sure we find a good tenant sure, as well. Sure. But um, when the time does, or I shouldn't say when, if the time does come that there is a headache that is there, right. we at least are removing you from the situation, sure. right? Our paralegal will handle everything from right. the time moving forward, and yes. you can just yeah. do whatever it is that you need to do. The situation will take care of itself. Right, right. So uh, with, with uh, investors that I dealt with in the past, right, I always try to educate them that it's not just an investment. It's not like buying a stock. Okay, there's a business component to it, right? Whenever you have income expenses, that becomes a business, right? So to understand that it's a business, it's not passive income. You have to be semi-active, not as active as going to a job or renting a business, but you still have to 
run it like a business, right? And that's why I see Cressy as a really, really strong uh, uh, addition to the, to their portfolio to help them mitigate all the tenant situation, tenant headaches. So they they could be down in uh, you know some some place warm in Florida, Miami Beach or something like that, and they got Kevin looking after things for them. I mean that's that's a that's a that's like a, a dream come true for most investors. That's the idea, right? Like you think about Christmas, I had somebody call me <laughs> on uh, Boxing Day because their dentures right. went down the toilet because I guess they had too many <laughs> beverages. Um, right? That's my issue to deal with, our team's right. issue to deal with, right. not the landlords. They didn't right. get interrupted during their holidays. Right. Um, I, just recently too, a, a client of ours was skiing and we had to turn the place over. He's like, oh, this isn't good for my timing. And sure, I was like, sure, sure. your timing? I was like, right. you don't have to do anything. Right. You can be anywhere in the world now with DocuSign and AuthentiSign. We'll take care of everything. Don't worry right. about your ski trip. You don't have to right. cancel it. Go have fun and we'll talk when you get back and everything will be looked after. And uh, they're relieved of that. Cause like you said, right. they want to do whatever it is they want to do. And we're here to take care of the property. Yeah. So dealing with Kevin, it's like a one-stop shop, right? So, you got everything in one under one roof. That's the idea. Cressy is an acronym for Complete Real Estate Solutions Investments, and it's all about being that complete solution. Right. I continue on working on that uh, constantly so that right. our clients know that you know, it's better to call Kevin about who do I need to talk to or right. what's going on versus right. Googling something, best plumber, electrician, whatever it may be. We have tradespeople for everything, contacts for everything. Um, 12 years now dealing in real estate and being a landlord and stuff like that, we can handle right. uh, everything and know everybody that can do almost anything. And if right. not, I can definitely point you in the right direction. Right. Well, just to let you know, Kevin, I mean, I've been doing investment for a long time now, and uh, I wish I knew, knew you way back when, when I had a lot of properties to manage. And I can honestly say not every property manager is built the same way, right? And hearing what you're saying to me right now, it, it's really refreshing to hear because a lot of property managers, they don't really know what they're doing, especially when it comes to tenant issues. It's, it's so delicate, you know? Oh. Um, I definitely don't know everything. Uh, I'm always <laughs> learning. Every yeah. situation is different. Every every tenant reaction is different. But uh, before real estate, I, I was in the restaurant industry. I started at 13 at Chuck E. Cheese and I did everything all the way through right. until I was 30. Right. And uh, I say all the time, if I can deal with a drunk, I can deal with anybody. Right. And uh, one of my mentors in the uh, restaurant industries taught me that the answer is yes. What's the question? Right. Um, there's a solution to every kind of problem. And I've kind of taken that into this business as sure. well. Sure. Uh, we will find an answer. It might not be me that knows it, but sure. again, the team that we have around us, I rely a lot on our paralegal staff. Like okay. I shouldn't say our staff, but yeah. they're, they have a whole right. uh, paralegal office with many legals that we get to talk to. Um, right. Right. So make sure our landlords are getting informed decisions, right. informed information right. so they can make a smart decision when that time comes right so tell me something Kevin uh, what's the worst tenant you ever, ever had to deal mm -hmm. with <laughs> yeah I would say when they get ignorant and rude and they just don't make things uh, going off uh, uh, he was in North York which is a borough mm -hmm. north of Toronto and yeah. okay. uh, rent wasn't being paid for many months uh, they argued with the landlord before we were involved too so that's another sure. thing okay um, we came in when the landlord called us saying, Hey, we have a problem, right. help solve it. Like, you know, <laughs> we, we, we get two kinds of clients. It seems we either get them at the very beginning because they don't want the headache at all from right. the beginning. And they know that we are a good source to use, or sure. they come at us when they have a problem and they right. don't want to deal with it anymore. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, they, they was, uh, an acquired tenant, um, to us anyways. Right. And uh, the the ignorance, the the swearing at me. I'm just doing a job. Sure, Do you know what I mean? Sure, You're the sure. one that's not paying your rent. Why anybody thinks they can live for free is beyond me. Sure. Uh, if there is an issue and you're going to go to LTB okay. or you want to take something complaint against your landlord, you still have to do it the proper way of as course. a tenant. Yes. Just like the landlord has to do it the proper right. way. Right. And they still have their mortgage to pay and stuff like that. And um, it's just educating tenants too. A lot of times they don't know and they get misinformation as well. Right. Well, my buddy Frank told me I could just stop paying rent. Right. Why would you stop paying rent? You know, you can, if you're right, you'll get it all back, but, right. uh, or whatever the claim is or whatever's sure. going on, but you have to continue to pay Absolutely. it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, again, I think a lot of the times it's how the situation goes. And I think I'm very good at diffusing a situation and right. dealing with people, but yeah, I just don't like listening to anybody when they start yelling at me or swearing at me. Right. I, I'm here to be, a, I'm working for the tenant just as much as I'm working for the landlord, right. even though right. 
the landlord's paying my tab. Right. I'm the one that has to make sure it's good for both of them. Okay. And uh, some tenants realize that I'm on their side as well to try to make right. sure that they're getting right. exactly what is needed. But, you know, some, okay. again, it's misinformation, I guess, is really what causes it. But it's the ignorance that bothers me the most. Okay. Now, on your website, I noticed that you are the master for solutions. Or, or you're the master, or you're, you're a problem solver, right? And that I, I think that's the key with uh, with managing properties, right? You need a problem solver, right? And you know, I, I can't I can't go to go to say Miami, Florida, and have a nice vacation if I don't have a problem solver for my properties, right? And you you, you are it, right? I mean, can you comment on that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's something that I pride myself on. I think I'm creative, and I, I again, the answer is yes. What's the question? I've built my business around that. We will figure it out. We will solve a problem. You may not like the solution. Right. It may cost you more than you wanted, sure, sure. but I'll find you a solution. Right. You know, sometimes things are out of our control, but uh, there's different ways to do, you know, as they say, what is it, a thousand ways to skin a cat? Right. Well, right. Yeah, here's a thousand, but mo most times I just want to know the quickest, least right. messy way, right? <laughs> and let's figure that out. Right. But no, uh, uh, whenever something has arised, it's about uh, what we can do to solve it. Right. You know, if there's multiple options, that's the landlord's choice in sure. which path sure. we go down. But sometimes it's okay. This is what we can do, but this is what we should do. Like, you know, this makes the most amount of sense for now, for future, for whatever. But um, again, like everything, it's sure. the landlord's decision. Sure. We're there to show them options right. and what they're obligated to do sometimes. Right. Right. So I'm going I'm to give you a real tough question, Kevin. I get this all the time, okay? The prices are falling, interest rates are high. I think I'm going to hold off until the market gets a little bit better before I buy, right? What's your take on that? So, yeah, that, that question is being spun around a lot right now with the market that we're going through. And I would say now is a great time to buy. Yes, interest rates are high, but prices are low, right. right? If anybody's been looking at the market for the last little bit, we're still 20 to 30% below in some markets what we were at the peak. Right. So if you were to tell me I could get a whole bunch of prime rib, <laughs> for a third of the price, I'm putting in some in the deep freezer, right. you know? So if you have the ability to buy real estate now, I think you should. Again, I'm definitely biased, right? I, yeah. I, I'm in this as well. But if you just do the math, sure. you should realize that we are going to appreciate and the equity is going to gain faster and be bigger than the amount of interest you're right. going to pay to be able to acquire that property. Right. Now, some people are in this situation and some people are in that, but it does make sense for some people right now to be buying right. and they shouldn't wait on the fence. It's like, uh, you know, when you were younger, we go to parties and no one ever was the first person in the pool. Everybody waited <laughs> until the first person jumped in and then everybody got in. Well, right. I tell you, this is something where you can get into the pool before everybody else. You, right. you don't need to right. be last. Right. Um, Warren Buffett, uh, one of his yes. greatest lines that I enjoy is, uh, if people are greedy, you yep. should be fearful. Right. And when people are fearful, you should be greedy. Right. And this is one of those times right now where the word flying around, and you're probably hearing it too, yeah, is uncertainty. Sure. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm uncertain of what the market's going to do or what's going to happen. Me too. I don't know, up sure. or down. Sure. Uh, I listen to economists every year. They all give me their same lawyer speak, right? This or that or this. It could yeah. be either way. But one thing is for sure that every economist has said uh, the whole time I've been in real estate is that we're not building enough new houses for right. the amount of people that need them. So that tells you right there, supply and demand. And everybody needs a roof over their head. So whether you own it or whether you rent it, you need a place to sleep. So right. that's why investment properties, that's why investors for all these years right. have been buying rental properties. Right. Uh, and I definitely think it makes sense. Okay. I'll coin another phrase by Warren Buffett. Right? Get rich slow. Don't try and get rich quick, right? Because you need you need that property to season with the capital appreciation, you know, with the cash flow. I mean, people don't realize that, but the rents also go up, appreciate as well. At least in in our in Ontario, right? So uh, so you you're waiting for that capital appreciation to go up, and also there's another component. And when you're paying down your mortgage, if you have a blended amortization mortgage, you're paying down the principal, right? So you got you got your capital appreciation, you got your equity build up. And also you have your cash flow. If it's positive, it's great. If it's not positive, you can always write it off, right? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you can shelter from taxes, right? By writing off expenses. So so getting rich slow is great, right? In my opinion. And that's the only way to do it. So now you also specialize in pre-construction, right? Tell us a little bit about what, what, what would be the ideal investment or investor candidate for pre-construction? 
so again, different ways to do that as well, right? But uh, when you can get in at the bottom floor, that initial launch, whether they call it the VIP right. or <laughs> platinum event, whatever it is, yeah. uh, that's when you want to buy. And, and I try to get in uh, with my guys on a phase one of a multiple phase development because, right. again, they're going to get more appreciation there than just a one-off building. Right. But there's lots of good opportunities to buy, especially in the Toronto area, uh, GTHA, everywhere around. There's so much right. development happening. Sure. But... You still have to know who the builder is, what's going on. You can still buy a bad project, but sure. uh, it's not just there's going to be one I have to wait for, right? A lot of people say, oh, this is going to come. There's ones that are always going to be better than the next, but like right. anything, it's getting in at that right sure. time, right? Sure. Time in the market versus timing the market. Right. Um, but yeah, by buying at the bottom level, you're going to get that appreciation sure. all through the time. Um, one of the things that we find a lot of people do with condos is they can only get one extra mortgage a lot of people right there's very few people out there well there's becoming more i guess as money's growing but not as many people can have multiple properties but most people that are looking at getting into real estate investment can get that second mortgage very easily so that allows them to uh, buy a condo pre-construction get that appreciation when that one comes due they can refinance it pull some money out of there and then they can use that appreciation to purchase another one or a down payment right. on another one, right. which gives them a three to four year window sure. where that tenant can live in and move on. And I normally say the one tenant, then you can sell it to somebody else. Right. You've gained your big growth and then now worry about the next one. So they're only ever going to have right. that one extra mortgage, but they're getting right. the appreciation every time. Right. So they're kind of like rolling through condos basically. Sure. So they're always having one coming and one that they're managing or, or right. renting up or that we right. can help them right. with right, right. <laughs> now i don't know if you guys got that big tip from kevin okay so he's saying you know get the appreciation and then refinance it out right now what's the beauty of that when you refinance it instead in, instead of selling it when you sell it you have capital gains tax so you have to pay taxes on the money you gain right but when you refinance it it's a loan so you don't have to it's not it's not income to you right and plus if you do it properly you can refinance it and write off the interest on that loan as well right so that's how you can build wealth without paying taxes you could defer the taxes for a longer longer period of time right so that's a real gem there from Ke from kevin yeah and, and you're right it's to, about collecting properties if you can afford to keep yeah. properties you should yeah. if you don't have to sell it don't sell it my wife tells me all the time <laughs> that we would make more money if i told people to sell instead of the hold exactly. but uh it's better for our clients if they can hold Absolutely. it it's the real game of monopoly right yes. collect collect and then build the hotel once you have the four exactly. um but no it's uh there's different ways to leverage and to right, build off right. of it and the different income streams and people don't really realize it uh, and, they, and they should understand that there's so many other options sometimes right. than just selling it if, sure. if something gets tough like right now that's the number one question right mark interest rates are going up do i sell something sure, sure. um yes maybe yeah. maybe not depending right. on your situation we might right. be able to uh leverage some things pull some money out whatever it is right. um right yeah it, it, again it all comes down to people's specific right. uh, situation right so through my life learning i find that the people that sell investment properties are are usually properties that are mismanaged right so having you on their side is really is critical right one of the properties i bought actually not too far from here at, at bathurst and harbor it was a three-story victorian style home and the owners were renting it as a rooming house right they were so frustrated there's garbage all over the house and you know, they had students in there they just don't, they, they were a don't water right so we we went in there and we picked it up for, for for cheap we renovated it triplexed it put property tenants in there and we flipped it at, at that time we flipped it for you know way back when like a hundred thousand dollars profit which was pretty good at that time but knowing what i know today i wouldn't have sold it <laughs> i wouldn't have sold it but but uh, getting back to my point right it's really really critical if you're into the real estate investment game to have somebody like somebody like kevin on your side to manage it for you because if you have bad tenants you're going to be a don't want it. You're going to lose money. You're going to think real estate is not a good game to play, and you're just going to get rid of it, and you're going to end up uh, not accumulating the wealth that you want to accumulate over a period of time. Right? Yeah, it's uh, start slow, build for tomorrow. Right? It's generational wealth, and it, and it definitely takes time to get it all. And I and I again, my company, so I'm biased. I definitely think property management is a way to 
uh, make your investment less headache for you, right? Which is the biggest one that all the negative things that landlords talk about is, I don't want to have to deal with this. Sure. I don't know how to fix something. I don't know somebody sure. that can fix something. Sure. And they don't realize that there are options out there. And again, we are a business write-off. It is sure. a business. When you sure. are a landlord, you own a rental property, you right. own a business. And uh, the way our Canadian government works yep. is income is income. Yep. They don't care if you got it from yep. your job that you go right. to Monday to Friday, right. nine to five, or if it came from your rental property. Right. So it doesn't mean that just because you got this income from your rental property, it has to stay there. Right. There's different things that we can do. And again, uh, you, you want a cash flow if you can, for sure. But if it's negatively... Uh, producing negative returns there's other ways to do it because i don't know anything else that appreciates like real estate i don't know anything else you can buy with just 20 percent of the value right. and i don't know anything else that someone else will pay off the remainder of your loan for you right, right? like i right. think it's the most powerful investment out there sure. and the only reason people are scared is because they don't want to have to deal with tenants headaches confrontation sure. uh, the uncertainty the unknowns of what right. it comes with it right. and uh Again, like I said earlier, the answer is yes, what's the sure, question? We will sure. find a solution, we'll figure it out, whatever right. it may be, right. um, to help you deal with your investment so that you right. can do whatever sure. it is that you want to do. Sure. I just want to point out uh, another gem that you mentioned there, okay? And that is 20% uh, down, right? And leverage, leverage is the word, okay? You're leveraging 80% of somebody else's money. Mm -hmm. Whether it be a financial institution or private money, you're leveraging that money, right? It's powerful. To be able to leverage 20%, in other words, if you have 100% of the down payment, you could buy five properties by leveraging other people's money, right? So leverage is really powerful for real estate. You can't do that in too many other investments, right? Nope. And also with real estate, I've never seen a property in my 35, 36 years as a real estate broker, real estate investor, I've never seen a property go from its current value to zero. But I've seen stocks do that. <laughs> I've seen stocks. You know, back in the day, people were buying the Blackberry stocks, uh, rim, the rim stocks. And, and I had clients that lost, lost their shirt uh, investing in rim at that time. And there's other stocks, you know. Uh, you know, Enron, you have no control. These companies are, are, are manipulating the stock prices and manipulating everything. With real estate, there's, there's no manipulation. Yeah, I know very little about stocks. Yeah. Um, I know a lot about real estate. Yeah. That's where I tend to, to concentrate. But the, the only thing is, is there's dividend ones, right? That they're going to get you or whatever, these smaller sure. ones that maybe they're sure. going to make sense over time. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I still would say if you gave me $100,000 to put in the stock market, I'd rather take that hundred and buy a $500,000 property. Absolutely. Right? It's not just 100000 You get 20% of your leverage, as you were saying. Right. Uh, on, on, 20% a loan to value, right? So right. you're going to get another 80% lent to you. Yeah. You cover all, all of Ontario. Are there any areas that you don't cover? Uh, not that we've found yet. Okay. Uh, again, thanks to our, our awesome Remax network. Uh, we have connections and boots on the ground everywhere. Okay. Um, we do only do the province of Ontario just because sure, I'm sure. only licensed for the province of Ontario. But um, yeah, we were as far east as Belleville, as far sure, north as sure. Sudbury, and down to Welland and Windsor. Right. Um, we cover in between. So I, right. I know we can go further if we went out to Ottawa, for example. Sure, we're not sure. there yet, but I, I know we could get there. Um, it's just... It, everything in our platform is done digitally and remotely pretty much. Okay. It's all through an app on landlord's phone. So we have that ability to okay. get out there. So and again, we're, we're management um, right. and we'll have the boots on the ground locally to take care right. of any type of right. maintenance. So wh what city would you recommend, or maybe two or three cities, would you recommend in Ontario right now that you think it's got a huge potential for uh, upside? I've always really liked London, okay. um, and I, and I, I, so I think a lot of our cities too are all very similar now, sure. right? They all have the McDonald's, the Home Depots, yes. everything yes. like that. Right. Um, but there's different things that um, that make them different, right? And the reason I say London is because it to me is the biggest little city yes. uh, that is out there, right? At the I went to school there too, so again I'm biased. I spent four years there. I know what it's right. like, but I still see it from the the outside now when I'm seeing everything else that it sure. has that infrastructure to be that biggest little city with little cities around it too, right? It's got right, that right. little bit of um, a core to the other right. people that come in from St. Thomas and okay. uh, Sarnia, Chatham around sure. it. Sure, okay. Um, but no, if I was going to say anything right now, we're growing cities. I think if you're looking between Toronto and Ottawa, there's places up there that are growing. Uh, okay. um, if you look the east end of Toronto, sure. uh, as you get out there, um, again, all, like there's a lot of development happening everywhere. Right. Um, but I, 
it really it's where your dollar is going to make sense for sure, you and where sure, you feel sure. comfortable because i would never tell somebody that if they bought a, a townhouse in kitchener it's going to do better than a townhouse in waterloo right um or you know brantford to uh, other areas too it's growing right now and prices are still pretty cheap there but right. uh it's got a lot that's coming around it as well with the development of paris and stuff so yes. um if you can afford Toronto, it's always going to be the best, right? right? right. Uh, everybody comes to Toronto, wants to be Toronto. You'll never have uh, issues here. Sure. I don't think with vacancy and anything, the further you go out, you do struggle a little bit more with right. finding a tenant that's going to make sense for your spot because your, right. your pool shrinks. Right. But no, if, you're, if I was going to say the number one, I would say you want to be somewhere in, in London. And if I was going to do a second one, I'd say somewhere in Niagara region uh, just because okay. there's a lot going on down there as well. And your pricing right. is still... Uh, less than what it is elsewhere. Right, right. So you brought up London. I love the city. Okay, Western University. I've got a lot of people asking for student rentals in London, Hamilton, etc. Yeah. What's your take on student rentals as a property manager? Yeah, so they're a lot more headache. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but again, whereas individuals are fingerprints and some people want sure. them, they do make more money, yeah. but they are more headache. Okay. Right? So there's more costs that come involved. So sometimes they aren't really netting more money sure, uh, sure but you might be taking in more in, in rent um to do it properly you want to rent them out like a rooming house like you mentioned before mm -hmm. um so that the common areas are accessible and they only get their room as their private area and you can right. get more guarantors on it that way rather than just having billy rent out to his little buddies right. and only having billy on the the lease and you don't know who the rest are right? right i'd rather give billy room a and sean room c or whatever sure, sure. and go out it that way but no it's uh, again it, it can be done there's the right type of properties for it um if you're looking to do that you want to find something where you can maximize your value uh and sometimes it's still by doing like a duplex with a couple of rooms or on a back split turning it into right um but no you got to have at least five rooms i think to to really make it go sure. to, to sure uh, have it but yeah like anything it can be done it's more headache it's right, right. Uh, but they're out there students are coming in from all over the world to come to school here especially when you're mentioning sure. western and you said hamilton too mac um we get a lot of uh asian students that come over here where right. their parents are paying the whole bill anyways right right they're giving you it all up front or they're they're sending it to you monthly anyways so yeah. you don't have to yeah uh really worry as much right um but no there's going to be more issues to deal with right uh, but we all went to college. We all had our fun as long as, right? Uh, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. it, it, you just have to know what you're getting into absolutely, there. Absolutely, absolutely. So how about Airbnb? I, I, I guess you don't get involved in that. But what's, what, what's your take on Airbnb? Um, so, yeah, we don't do any short-term rentals. We do have two companies that we work with uh, okay. on a referral basis for people that do like that. Um, I like the contract idea behind it. It's not a, a residential lease. It's a okay. commercial lease. So you have a little bit more power as the landlord. Okay. But it seems like a lot of places are frowning on it. They don't yeah. want them in condos. Yeah. Um, and when people say, oh, I'm going to get an Airbnb, but I'm going to do it in, in Barrie. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so really you're just doing a short-term rental that you're always going to want to fill. Right. Uh, no one's really wanting an Airbnb in Barrie unless sure, sure. they're traveling from London to go see a friend's wedding and they're going to stay mm -hmm. at the house for the weekend or right. something, right? Like It's not like an Airbnb in Toronto where you're taking away from the hotels. Right. Um, and... We travel and we always stay in an Airbnb because my wife needs a full kitchen, right. right? So we want that ability where in a hotel you don't normally get it. That's true. Um, so <laughs> they're definitely very beneficial to right. travelers out there and people. Uh, we've had clients stay in them for a few weeks. So there is um, a, a demand for them. Sure. Uh, but I just think uh, it's not my specialty. Right. And I, I think, but the contract is definitely in your favor as right. a landlord. So tell me, Kevin, what's your, what's your client mix? Is, are they single family homes, uh, you know, with legal basement apartments, uh, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, sixplexes, apartment buildings? You know, what's, what's your client mix? So right now we have nothing bigger than a sixplex. Uh, okay. The program that uh, we built, the landlord protection program, is for the everyday investor like you and sure. I okay. uh, to make sure they don't have to deal with it. So majority are single families. Uh, we have a few different condos, uh, so again, single family, but then we have some duplexes. Uh, we have one sixplex that we manage, okay. uh, so we have the, the one commercial property that we're handling, but everything else is all residential. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, there's two triplexes, two duplexes, and then uh, okay. the one six and one five, and the rest are all okay. single family. So, so let's talk about your one-stop shop, one-stop service, okay? So if I'm an investor, I'm looking to buy something, can you help me find the property as well? 
Yeah, for sure. So okay. again, the complete solution, right? So sure. uh, I'm also been uh, selling houses for Remax for 12 years. Okay. And uh, I have a small team. Again, it's the Cressy team of Remax. Right. And we definitely help people buy and sell their primaries, but we have people that help them find an investment as well. So again, okay. you're getting that holistic advice all the way from the beginning because some people just say, oh, and they just throw a dart at the wall and they go buy something. Right. Uh, whether it's pre-construction, that's sure. one I find a lot where uh, people don't understand what they're getting into with pre-construction until afterwards. And they right. just use sure. their their cousin who's a realtor, right? We, we all know at least three realtors, yeah. they say. But uh, we specialize in this, sure. right? There are area specialists. You know, if I'm moving to Leslieville where we are right now... Um, Mark Arnott, right? I think that's, this is his area of town from Remax that he's here all the time. But anyway, people have their areas. We sure. specialize in the investment side of things. And okay. the example I give to people all the time is that if your brother was the best brain surgeon in Canada, sure. but you needed heart surgery, yep. would you ask your brother to do it? <laughs> No, right? No. There's no way. Yeah. The brain and the heart are two completely different things, and I want yeah. the best heart surgeon to be yeah. working on my heart. I may ask my brother who to talk to, yeah. but I'm sure not going to let him come me open there. Um, same thing with us, right? We specialize in investments. We work with landlords. We understand what landlords are needing, sure. wanting. And uh, we, so, yeah, there's different things working with someone. Sure. Um, so, yeah, from beginning to end yeah. and even afterwards, right, okay. uh, with the property management. So, so let me get a little more clarity. So I buy a home through your team, right? And then the place is vacant. I need to get some quality tenants. Are, are you going to look after that for me too? Yeah, so we definitely place tenants. So the RICO is our, our governing body as yeah. uh, real estate agents, and they definitely make sure that I wear two different hats. Right. Uh, I have my real estate hat and I have my property management hat. Right. Yep. Anything that is considered a real estate transaction has to be done through Remax. Okay. Uh, so that includes leasing, buying, yep. and selling. Yep. Uh, the property management company, where it comes into play is we do it as like a second tier. Okay. So placing a tenant is the most important thing. You mentioned earlier that no tenant is better than a bad tenant. Yes. Uh, the one that I say is a couple months of vacancy at the beginning is better than six to 10 months of bullshit at the end. Absolutely. And uh, we really go through who we're looking at. So again, if we're, we're managing a property in Windsor, they go through our team. Ivano helps them down in Windsor. Okay. He leases it out. He finds quality tenants that he thinks are good. Right. He then lets them know that, by the way, this property is managed by Cressy Property Management and they're going to now want sure. to talk to you as well. Right. So they're getting a second layer of okay. follow-up, of questions. So everybody, like we're saying, is trying to avoid that professional tenant, the one sure. that's going to take advantage, the one that doesn't care. And a lot of what we do at that beginning is going to steer those tenants away from us. Right. Those uh, professional tenants, again, the ones that are out there to take advantage of landlords, are, are taking advantage of people that don't know what they are doing, right. that don't have all the things in place that sure. they need. Sure. And that, that tenant says, oh, look at Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I can easily right. go through them for a year and take advantage or whatever. Right. So by having them know that a property management is going to be that second level, it's a deterrent for sure. And sure. it gives another level. Sometimes somebody answers a question a little bit differently that mm -hmm. second time and right. we get more information or they say something else or whatever it may be. Um, the other part of that second thing is that we're connected with Equifax. Right. So we let them know that as well when we're placing the tenant that, okay. uh, and, and this can be used because tenants can have sure. bad credit. It's sure. just one piece of the puzzle. Right. Uh, the way we are connected with Equifax is they can rebuild their credit or right. at the same time, we're gonna see what's going on. So sure. Sure. Uh, like Visa and Rogers, they can um, negatively affect your credit when you don't pay their bills on time. Right. We can do the same as a reoccurring monthly bill through okay. our, our system. Right. Um, they did a study out in British Columbia and they said that through this program we, we stole it from a company out there called Front Lobby which is great sure uh, I shouldn't say stole white label it whatever right we go through it and use it all through them but they said 68% of their tenants absolutely love the program Okay. Well, that tells you that 32% don't plan on paying their rent on time. <laughs> so when you're doing tenant placement at the right, beginning, right. you got to think right away, you're eliminating three out of the 10 possible tenants. Sure. Now you're choosing from the best seven right. and you've already gotten rid of the worst three for sure. sure. Um, so yeah, um, I kind of went a little bit off track there and I apologize, yeah. Yeah. but no, the tenant placement thing is a holistic picture where we're sure. going through sure. and we can definitely help whether it's us specifically in our team, right. someone uh, on the outskirts in a different right. city, right. or even if they're working with you and someone on your team and they're very happy with you guys and they want you guys to lease it out, sure. we sure. can just be that second layer to right. make sure right. that that tenant knows exactly what's going on. But it's uh, right. 
again, about being a better landlord. And a better landlord sure. is a business owner. It's someone that treats it as such and uh, has someone like myself in place. Okay, absolutely. So I know that uh, in, in, my, in my dealings with investors, landlords, right, they think it's easy to find a good tenant. They think, I'll just put, I'll just put an ad in the Kijiji and I'll have 100 people inquiring, right? But they don't really realize what it takes to find a good tenant. You can find a tenant, no problem, mm -hmm. but to find a good tenant, right? So, what are some of the some of the qualifications that you go through when you when you when you reviewing a tenant's profile? Yeah, so the the easy ones that we all go through, right? It's kind of like your main things that you want to have checked, sure. right? You're looking at credit score for one because that's something that just kind of shows you a little bit about right. their history. Sometimes there's a situation that has caused it to be different, but we still want to. Uh, check that out so sure. that we know what's going mm -hmm. on. We run their entire Equifax okay. report. Okay. So that we see what they've owed, what they've done, everything. Okay. Um, talking to their employer okay. uh, to find out what kind of employee they are. Sure. Uh, you know, do they get to work on time all the time? Right. That's something I want to know. Do they get a, like, you just, you never know what someone's going to say to you when you're asking questions about the person. Right. right. Just tell me a little bit about Frank. How long has he been working for you? What's going on? Right. And they go through it. Uh, it it's just really about asking different questions and talking to all the people involved. Uh, I'll give you the i'll give you another big tip here okay um this is one of the things that we do with everybody and it's not okay. about calling their current landlord right it's about calling their previous current. landlord yes. right that, that the current <clears throat> landlord has skin in the game <laughs> if they're a bad tenant they're going to tell you oh no they're awesome please take them you yeah. know what yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll ship them out right <laughs> away to you it, the, That's true. the the old landlord the mm -hmm. one that had an experience with them before they moved sure. on they are going to tell you exactly how it is and right. what it is right so that's always a call that we make right. um to make sure what's going on but yeah yeah uh it, it's definitely the hardest thing to do is to to place a good tenant and to be sure about it sure um you definitely want to be advertising in the right places sure. and going sure. everything through that way uh, on, on our property management website, we actually have a resource uh, center and downloadable stuff. And one of the things we've created is our tenant search and find guide. And it really goes through those steps of where you want to be putting an ad, how you want to kind of be wording it and stuff like that in case right. somebody does want to go do it themselves. But a lot of times people realize once it takes, they see what it actually yeah, takes to yeah, do it. They'd yeah. rather have somebody else right, right, do it. Right. But no, that, that, yeah, we have uh, that type of resource there so they can see exactly right. the steps that we go through when we're yeah. searching out for a tenant. But it really just comes down to uh, a asking the right questions sure. and sure. consistently. Sure. Yeah. And also, I just thought you know, uh, all you folks uh, listening to this uh, fine, fine property manager and realtor, uh, when you are looking at the at tenant profile, right, some of them give you fake salary letters. My goodness, you know, and, and, you know, we've been in the industry for a long time. We know what to look for, right? And talking to an employer, like you said, right? That's a gem. That's a real gem. You have to talk to an employer to make sure it's, it's a legitimate uh, yeah. salary letter that they're, that they're presenting to you, right? Yep. And here's the other thing too, right? To draw up that offer, offer to lease, right? I find, in my experience, that is tougher to draw up an offer to lease than it is to draw up an agreement to purchase. Do you agree with that? <laughs> uh, the deals, the deals, I definitely say, are always harder and lengthier. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, there's more that, uh, yeah, I guess it depends, right? You're yeah. definitely not as straight up all the time. Yeah. I, I will say when you're... Um, Tenants, I think, are more pickier about when they're going to rent a place yeah, than when yeah, someone's going to yeah, buy a place, yeah. which is funny. But yeah, no, it, there's, there's more intricacies, intricacies there to what we have to yeah, do and, yeah. and how we have to put that together for yeah. sure. Because I, I find there's a lot more clauses you have to consider. And also, the clauses that you put together for your tenant may not be acceptable to your landlord. They may want to put in another clause in there, like, you know, maybe, a, like, I, I, have a, I have a landlord right now that, that insists on putting the smoke detector right that they keep the smoke detectors active and working and not to dismantle because a lot of them this they take it off uh you know they they unscrew it or whatever yeah. because they were frying some chicken uh so so he's insisting on this clause so when i get an offer from another agent right that comes in they don't have the clause in there so now we're getting into the sign back mode right unless i and i said put a schedule a on the on the mls itself right so how, how, how do you handle that aspect of it uh, having landlords or, or agents presenting offers to you that may not be uh, acceptable to your landlord. Yeah, so we have our schedule that we attach to it okay. and we send it right back so it's nice and easy. Okay. Um, with some of the things though too, with clauses, sadly, the 
doesn't matter what we write. Sure. The LTB overrules. Yeah. Um, which is another reason why I like the idea of being a, an investor in the commercial side, sure, sure. because now the game changes when you're yeah. in commercial. But yeah, like we can write clauses about them having to shovel the snow, but at the right. end of the day, right. Right. Um, that's a landlord responsibility, right? right. So right. Uh, we do whatever we can. We talk to them. Most people don't mind shoveling the snow, right? right? And if you provide them with a shovel and right. the salt right. and stuff like that, and right. they don't care. Um, well, it depends. But no, <laughs> yeah. You have to write the clauses sure. in to the best sure. you can and yeah. agree with anything. Right. But uh, a lot of times, what right. you write sometimes won't right. matter. Right. And now you have the uh, agreement to lease. On top of it, Ontario has implemented the standard lease as well, right? Yeah. So do, the work. do you do both? Okay. Yes. So I, I'm bringing this up to let you know that we earn our keep, okay? Oh, yeah. This is, this is not an, as easy as it looks, right? And to make sure that you get a, a good tenant that's going to pay rent and keep your place you know, in good condition, yeah. that that is an art in itself, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, um, and just with what you're saying about leases, and it makes me think about landlords that want to do it themselves, and they get a just the Ontario standard lease, which is fine. It goes through everything, but they don't really know what they're putting together, how they're doing it. I, I belong to all these different landlord Facebook right. groups, and yeah. you see the different uh, advice that they get from different people and how it all goes, and it's not always right. Sure, <laughs> it's sure. not always whole either, right? Sometimes it's partially right, and people don't understand exactly what's going on. Right. But no, that that lease in our mind, we do both. Um, we start with one, and then we finalize with uh, the Ontario one afterwards once we've agreed to everything. Right. But we are just kind of doing the same work twice with that. Right. Um, but no, the the one makes us have it now. Right. So when someone's looking for investment property, what do you think is uh, some of the factors that are really important, like location? You know, are there people renting in the area? For for instance, if I bought a home in Forest Hill, right, in Toronto, it's probably kind of difficult to find a tenant because, you know, I'm looking for a $10,000 a month tenant, right? Basically, what, what factors do you, do, do you recommend? Yeah, well, you definitely want to be in an area that's going to have renters. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. If you're, you, you might find someone that's able to pay $10,000 a month. Yeah. They're probably going to be a professional athlete. They yeah. probably just signed a one-year sure. contract, yeah. and they're not sure if they're going to be on a Raptors team next year or not, right. so they're renting from you. Right. Uh, Jose Bautista used to rent uh, in Mississauga in Lauren yeah. Park. Um, so th they do do that. There are, sure. But it's very, very small. Right. right? When we're thinking about a renter's pool to find the best tenant or the best one available or a really good one. You want the biggest possible pool to pick sure, out of. Sure. So to do that, you got to find the most renters. And where do most people rent? Your young professionals starting out, your small couples yep. and stuff like that, small families. Right. I, I even say to stay away from the larger apartment buildings and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I think if you're in a condo, the best one is your one bedroom plus den. I think it, okay. uh, if the den is big enough, it can be a second bedroom or right. for a small baby or whatever. And it just allows you to have two people live in that condo more comfortably than one right. um sometimes one can do it right. but it just it opens up more doors i think and uh so i always suggest to be somewhere where it's a starter so a, a townhouse and down is more affordable for you okay so easier to cash flow right. but then you also are going to have condo fees so there's sure. that balance as well right so it just depends where you're at but um single family detached homes uh if you can put them into two right. easier that way as right. well but then they right. have to be the right type of layout sure. to be able to do so but yeah even when you get into a full detached home now your rent and pool for that is very small right. but you still have people that are migrating in and out coming from other countries other parts of the of our country as well that maybe aren't ready to buy yet so they're looking for a home for two right. three years but you're um it, it again it's about the bigger pool sure. of renters and i think you're going to find more of them right. when you're in that starting area versus the right. more established area right so lately, I've been getting a lot of uh, inquiries from people, like five friends getting together, right? Five truckers, they want to rent a unit mm -hmm. from you. What's your take on that? So we actually had that exact same situation <laughs> uh, at a property in Brampton. Okay. Uh, it was a duplex. Yeah. And uh, the, the, I don't think it, it wasn't originally five truckers. It was three truckers. Okay. Turned into be about five or six people living there. Right. Um, but that's what they wanted was basically just a place to sleep. Okay. And um, we acquired this property again. They were already in there. We didn't place these tenants. Yeah. Um, they were placed by a realtor. So that realtor, assumingly, did their due diligence to see everything. But yeah, you have now people that are a transient lifestyle, in and out at all different hours. That's cars moving at different times. Right. Shared property was the problem. Uh, if they had the whole house, it might have been better. But because they had basement tenants, uh -huh. they're always complaining about cars being in the wrong spot, yeah. coming in at the wrong time, noise. 
Because if they just get home from driving at 2 o'clock in the morning, they're not able to go to bed sometimes right, right away. Right. Um, but, yeah, again, you're, uh, it's the lifestyle. It's the fit, the tenant mix, right? Who's going to be there? Right. Um, but if uh, – I'm pretty easy when it comes to tenants. I try not to bother them if they don't bother us, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. If they're paying on time and everything's looked after, right. um, there's not much I need to worry about. Right. Uh, right. There are, but – when you have again tenants complaining in the basement or whatever happening or neighbors right. complaining right. um we have to do something about it garbage on the right. front like whatever it is that can happen right um that that can't sure, sure. but yeah i again the occupation is definitely a piece to the puzzle right uh, how, how are they going to fit there but right. it's uh I know that landlord wasn't happy when they were dealing <laughs> with it all, uh, with what they had to do, but they did. Yeah. They knew the situation when they put them in there. Right, 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 right. right. So I want to give our audience another tip from you, okay? So you have a tenant profile coming to you, perfect yeah, employment, you know, uh, everything's great. The only problem is the credit is not, not so great. What do you do in that situation? Uh, have a conversation with them, find out why. Yeah. Uh, again, credit is something we all need, whether you're owning a house, buying a house, yeah. renting a house, mm -hmm. buying a car, right. getting a credit card. Okay. Uh, it's something we have to rebuild. My, um, my younger brother at the age of 30 at that time actually had no credit. Okay. Uh, he had been on my mom's credit card and phone and everything like that. And this is going back a few years. But anyways, okay. realized how, how bad it was. Worse right. to have no credit than bad credit. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, it's a piece of the puzzle. We help people rebuild it. We look yeah. at it all okay. um, and find out what happened. Sure. You know, sure. if this is a consistent thing and they're not going to have the affordability to be able to keep our place, okay. then... You know, that's definitely not a, a great tenant. Okay. Um, but there are some times where they came out of a divorce and things got messy and they need a place, right. you know, and um, single parents, if they want to sure. see their kids, they need a place. Right. They need a place that's going to be uh, able to accommodate as well. Right. Like uh, a single dad with two kids, if it's opposite sex, mm -hmm. they need at least two bedrooms for the kids right. and he would have to sleep on the couch or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Like when you're thinking sure. about something, sure. yeah. um, it's unfortunate, but they need a place. They're, they're, they are not going to default on their rent. Right. So they're going to lose their house and not be able to see little Jimmy and right. Susan anymore, right? They, right. they need to do that. Okay. So bad credit or not, again, depending what's happening, uh, it might not mean the end of the world. But it's definitely something to look at. How, how about a new immigrant that has no credit? They got a job. Yep. You know, they got a job offering, right? They, got, they can show you the, their contract. But no credit, no Cana yeah, no Canadian credit. No, it's 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 a roll of the dice there. Yeah. Um, but that's a lot of our situations. You know, there's yeah. been a lot of immigrants coming from Ukraine as of late, uh, coming over just trying to do whatever. Most immigrants come to get started again, sure. right? So yeah. they need something. They yeah. need a that helping hand. Right. Um, and listen. Uh, I rented for nine years of my life before we bought our first house. I was never a, a bad tenant. I may have thrown a couple parties, but I, right. you know what I mean? Sure. Once was laid on rent, got it back the next right. day. Right. You know, we have tenants sometimes that do catch up and it's more about the person. Sure. You know, I think most people want to pay their rent. They understand it. They, right. they know that it's a cost of living. They're not right. trying to be that professional tenant. Right. But no, yeah, again, it's all about uh, the holistic story of who it is, who we're renting to, what's sure. going on. Sure. Um, the deposit thing is weird with what's going on. There's a lot of people that offer uh, mm -hmm. more month right. in, in advance. Sure. Um, there's two issues there. One, you can't really do it. Right. <laughs> two, if they give it to you all up front, what does it matter anyways? After they get through that fifth month, now you have no protection. Right. Um, we have done it in the past, and if it... If, They've offered it, obviously, but the way we tell them to do it is as a last month's Correct. deposit. Yes. So that way, if you stop paying, we now have five months, last month's deposit. Right. And then, you know, you're giving your regular 90 days or whatever they have to do anyways, and we right. can refund. But that gives at least the landlord a little bit of protection, knowing that something is going on and they're paying their rent from the beginning on. Right. To give them five months of deposit up front... Right. doesn't give the landlord any protection right. uh, if they stop. But to have it as a last month's payment, okay. at least it does that there. But again, it's not something we can legally ask for or do right. anything with. It has to be, right. um, yeah. Now, how about students? I mean, you rent to a student and the parents are paying for it, but they're somewhere in another country, right? Mm -hmm. So if they don't pay the rent, you know, you're not going to be able to 
sue them for 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 a payment, right? So so how do you how do you handle that situation? I haven't had that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Okay. Um, but again, most people are coming uh, that are in that situation. Yeah. Either if their parents are local, they're co-signing. If they're not, right. then that's where that comes in. But anybody that's sending their kid halfway across the world normally has the ability to pay rent, right. and they're not going to not pay rent. Right. Um, I guess that's, again, an, uh, has to be discussed with the landlord. They have to know pros and cons to right. everything. Right. But um, I find that a lot of the, they want uh, condos with 24-hour uh, security, right. and they're paying for that. Um, we mm -hmm. even had... Uh, one uh, student who came over and bought something just right. for the three years that they were here because right. they had that type of uh, cash flow in their family, which is great. It's right. a better way to do it. If you can buy one and then sell it in four years, right, when you're done right. school. Right. Um, but no, yeah, it's um, hopefully we never have to chase people worldwide. It would technically go in as a loss, right? right. But again, it's about talking to the right person. and just yeah. You get that feel, right? I'm not saying I'm, I'll never be fooled. But I think I'm a pretty good judge of character when we're talking to somebody. Sure. Um, and then if there is, because um, I, I only speak English and barely, um, <laughs> we do have other agents right. that speak other languages sure. that can at least right. uh, communicate in mother tongue. Right. That way everybody is understanding of everything. Because, sure. um, yeah, that sometimes can be a little bit of an issue as well. And I think that also shows that we care to communicate and to accommodate to what's going on to somebody right. that's right. already right. moving halfway across the world. Okay, so... I wanted to do a little exercise. I want to look into the Kevin crystal ball, okay. right? What do you think the interest rates are going to do and what the, what's the market going to do in 2024, 2025? So, again, question that we're talking about all the time <laughs> right now, right? What's going to happen next? Um, I, I made the joke, actually, when we did this the other day, that it's not really a crystal ball right now. It's more of a, Remember the magic eight ball? Yeah. The black one? <laughs> I just keep shaking it to get a different answer. Yes, no, <laughs> maybe, right? right? I didn't like that answer. We'll get a new one. But um, in, in all seriousness to what's happening right now and what I think is going to come right. um, is something that uh, is going to separate our, our class over this next decade. I don't think okay. it's going to happen quickly. Sure. Mm -hmm. But as I said, we had a third of our country renting when I did the study in 18, 2018. And I'm pretty sure by now we're closer to 40%. Okay. Um, and I think that number is going to grow. Um, with regards to the rate, I think it's going to come down. I don't think... I think it was crazy that we saw something at two and below two. That's free money. I don't know okay. why that ever happened. I have no control. Uh, I think in a real world, we should have something between three and five, three and five and a half, something like that. That just flows back okay. and forth. Um, but again, it might make sense for people now, whether the rate is high, rate is low. Mm -hmm. uh, if the affordability is there for you to do something, do it. Right. You know, um, the interest rate is temporary. Right. right. You're going right. to own that thing for a long time. The right. equity is going to appreciate. Sure. Sure. We have uh, clients that rent here in Toronto, but bought rentals in Fort Erie or London because they can afford there and they want to get their foot in the market somehow mm -hmm. uh, and still be out here. So there's, again, creative ways to do something. But I, uh, everybody needs a roof over their head. Prices right. are going to go back up. Right. Uh, we went through a huge run of just uh, mm -hmm. an incline like crazy that, if it was COVID or whatever, no, no one could do anything else other than buy houses. So that's what people did. Right. But no, I, I think our market's going to come back stronger sure, this year. Sure. I've already seen uh, an uptick in activity in the last two weeks versus what was happening in the last right. two months. Okay. Um, we have a couple of listings already coming on at the end of the month and more activity being talked about. Um, but yeah, this is what drives our economy is real estate, right? And construction. Right, right, right. So I always say to my clients, right? The best time to buy real estate is 20 years ago. And the second best time is today, yeah. honestly, right? Because, you know, if you bought real estate 20 years ago, did it go up in value? Right? A little bit. So if, you, <laughs> <laughs> so if you buy today, no matter what the market does, 20 years from now, I think it, I think confidently this is going to be a lot worth a lot more than, than what you paid for it today. I 100% agree. Right. Um, yeah, that, that, that saying is very true. Right? Same thing about a tree, as they say. Right. Best time to plant a tree 20 years ago yeah. to get shade. Yeah. So uh, I'm st I'm starting to run out of questions, Kevin. You've been you know fantastic in answering all the questions uh, that you have. So uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, Kevin, and 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 get your expertise and services, how do they do that? The easiest way is just follow that hat there. Cressy.ca is uh, our main website. Okay. It branches off into everything else. Uh, all of our phone numbers are there, and we're on all the different social media platforms as well. 
Uh, we're about to launch a landlord uh, support group for Ontario-based landlords here so that they can, again, okay. understand a little bit more. But yeah, right. uh, Cressy.ca is the best place to start. My email is kevin at Cressy.ca. And uh, if you're watching this and you want to call me directly on my cell, 647-801-4425 <laughs> is my cell and you can get right to me. Thank you, Vic, Kevin. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, welcome to the Real Estate News Network uh, where we're going to talk about everything about real estate. And I grilled this person, Kevin, as much as I could, and he answered all the questions brilliantly, so I highly recommend Kevin. Give him a call.